Hello, 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 everyone. Happy stamping time with Christine. I am in my studio located in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin, and tonight I'm here live to do the poppy class with you. We have four beautiful cards that we're going to make. I had 17 people sign up for this class, so that is super exciting. And <laughs> we're going to get going in just a little bit. But I'm going to pull up my comments here as you girls are all getting logged on. Dawn, it's live. <laughs> you should be able to find it in the news feed now. <laughs> so that's a little bit tricky. Hi, Kelly. Hey, you're on. Yay. That's a little bit tricky that it doesn't pop up until I'm live. And so I try to be right on the dot. There you go, girl. Dawn's on as well. Yay. So two of you are on from the class, so that's exciting. So I had 17 people that signed up for this class that got the card kits, or I had two people of those 17 that wanted the completed cards. So I'm so excited, that's yay! So hi, Diane. And she just picked up her kits. I'm not sure, Diane, if you had a chance to, to look at the PDF of uh, the class that I just sent. So, all right, I got you girls up on my phone. It's really funny. The comments come in in both places at different times. So this way I can check both of them. So that's good. Hi, Soledad and Isabella. I hope you girls are ready for some fun card making time here. So oh, it's hard to believe it's already May 14th. It is officially Bop's day. I don't know if anybody remembers who Bop is that knows me, but that was my brother's childhood cat growing up. It was the black cat that became the first house cat that my parents ever had. And my dad always said that there will never be a house cat. Well, oh, there will be a house cat over his dead body. <laughs> and my dad is not dead. My dad is fully alive and functioning and that cat has come and gone. <laughs> but that cat passed or paved the way <laughs> for another house cat. And they went from a black cat to a white cat that is named Whitey, and Whitey has beautiful blue eyes. Hi, Jennifer. So today is Bop's day. Bop was born on May 14th, 25 years ago. <laughs> Do the math, I don't know when that was, but this cat survived when it shouldn't have survived. So it actually was ran over three times accidentally. I grew up on a farm, <laughs> so cats were always under leg and under tire, it seemed. And this cat was my brother's little prized uh, possession joy like cat. And uh, my dad ran it over, my mom ran it over, and then I think my dad ran it over. I can't remember exactly, but it went to the vet every time because this was my brother's cat and it survived. And then she got pregnant and was gonna have babies and she couldn't have the babies because her pelvis was not in any condition to have babies. So anyways, this is a long story about how it's Bop's day today. And <laughs> so my brother, first thing this morning, hi Rhonda, my brother messaged me at like eight o'clock this morning and he sent me a picture of the cat and said, happy Petunia. So the cat was Petunia Bopper and we called her Bop. So it was happy Petunia day. So hi Karen. So I have to say that ever since I was a child or how like my teenage years that May 14th has come and gone and we've always had to wish our siblings and family a happy Bops Day. So I wish everybody on here a happy Bops Day. I think that Soledad, if you're still watching, <laughs> you've heard many stories about Bop. So and Sammy and Summer and Hipper and all the cats. So hi Jolene. All right girls. So that's my little story about Bops Day. Um, tonight, just to have a few quick announcements. So catalogs have arrived, schedules have been printed, wish lists have been printed. If you are watching me last night, my my friend who prints my stuff for me, it was she knew she could get a hold of me by contacting me through the live. And so I was multitasking working business with class last night. So so I have the schedules printed. Tyler was my middleman and he brought them over last night. And I have the wish list. So for my customers that are out there and you've shopped me with me within the last six months, I, so Soledad says Sammy was not nice. Sammy left little presents for Soledad in her bed when she came to stay with me on the farm. So, so I have the schedules already and I have catalogs ready and I'm ready for porch pickup or making connections with you uh, to get your catalogs to you. I'm so, so excited. Just look at this beautiful cover. 
I'm gonna flip it down, but ooh, ah, it's so pretty. And Bonnie and Cheryl helped me out. They took it to, I think, Staples it was, and they had it bound for me with a plastic cover. And so it makes it really easy. Oops, now I can't show you that yet, but makes it really easy to flip through the pages. So yay to the catalog. So yes, that is available for you girls that need one. You just gotta reach out to me and I will make connections with you. Catalogs, schedules are ready. I did email them out today. I also published them in, in my private VIP customer page. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do for my business page, because I can't share files in there, what I will probably do is take a snippet or a screenshot of the June class schedule and I'll post it in there so that everybody can see that. Hi, Francie Freeberg. <laughs> Francie's in the house. So if you want a class schedule from me and you did not receive an email from me today and you're not in my VIP group, just private message me, text me, call me, instant message me, reach out to me on my Cards by Christine page and I will definitely send you a schedule. So, And I also have them available for pickup for anybody that wants a paper copy because if you're like me, you like paper. <laughs> so, okay, so that's catalogs. I made myself a list, girl. So those are the catalogs. All right, and then I had some requests. Oh, I will flip down my screen and I had a couple people ask me, hi, Stacy. I had a couple people ask me for some advice and on how to's and on how to do something. So I thought I'd take a couple minutes here and I'm gonna flip down and I wanna show you. One of my gals asked me about opening up an ink pad. So Stampin' Up's ink pads are a new style compared to what they were about two years ago. They are more like a compact case. And the reason I'm doing this separately now because the class that I'm doing tonight, none of the ink pads are used. We're only using a Versamark, a Stazon, and a Memento, and those are different pads. So I just wanted to call out that the new ink pads are like a compact. What you have to do is you have to open them like that. It kind of pops up, and then it flips back, and then it slides open and shut this way. And when you first get your ink pads, they're super tight, and some people run chapstick along here like the beeswax chapstick or they run the chapstick. Hi, Elaine. And so that helps to help, um, allow this to slide a little bit better. The main thing that you have to do when you have this open like this is you have to slide it back and then flip it shut. If you try to open this and have the pad open like this, if you try to open it and pull it up right now while it's back here, what's going to happen is it's going to crack your cases here. So I don't know if you can kind of see that, but it's, it's broken right here and it's right here. This poor ink pad had a, a bad accident. Uh, at one point it was opened and it was lifted up right now like this and it was try, somebody tried to open it while it was back here. And it's a learning curve with these new ink pads. And so this is bound to happen, but I don't want you to have it to happen to any of your ink pads. So the other thing I wanna note is that these ink pads, when they are shut, the ink pad is upside down. And so when it's upside down, that allows the ink to be stored at the surface. So when you open up the ink pad, you're ready to go. So you can see this one's a little bit tight. So, so now it's ready to go. Sometimes when you have ink pads like the memento pad like this, you take the cover off and the ink is stored, the, it's not right. So when I store, I shouldn't say it's not right, but it's just not the best way. So when I store my memento, I always store my memento pad upside down like this. I don't store it like this. And Francie is saying to squeeze in the middle of the end of the stamp case, it nicely pops open. Good point there, yay. So girls, so that was the question about how to store ink pads and how to open them. So again, this slides shut and then it will flip and then it will snap shut like that. So hey, Char, thanks for sharing. Thank you again for always reminding me to have you girls share. Um, like, comment, share. I will do a drawing tonight um, afterwards for somebody to win something. <laughs> I always try to do something. I've got five cards off in the mail today that I announced last night. So, so that's a little bit about the ink pads. Okay. So what you have to do is open it like a compact, flip it, slide it, 
And then when you're done, you slide it and you just snap it shut. Okay, so that was something that was asked of me. And then another thing that was asked was the piercing mat. What does a piercing mat do? Well, in this case, my dad and Tyler <laughs> used it as a cutting mat. <laughs> but a piercing mat is primarily used when you have photopolymer stamps. And I don't have any right down here at the moment. I don't think I do. Uh, so the photopolymer stamp is that clear red rubber stamp. And what happens is when you have a stamp that's red rubber, you have foam here. That foam acts as an extra little bit of cushion. And with the photopolymer, you don't have that foam. So it's highly recommended to have a piercing mat like this underneath when you stamp because that helps to give you a nice, even stamped image. Uh, or a mouse pad works. The reason that I don't use a pierce mat in front of you live is because I have this foam mat. You can see mine is down here. It's a big 11 by 17 one. And that gives me a lot better, bigger surface. Hi, Jay. Hi, Sue. Thanks for joining, girls. So that's a little bit of what a piercing mat is. Also, if you have to use a pokey tool to poke things, it allows you to poke into it. So this is what a piercing mat is. So they're only $5 in the Stampin' Up! catalog. And so I just, somebody had asked about that, so I thought it'd be worthwhile to mention it. I always put a piece of paper around it so that when I'm stamping, I can practice stamping on the paper and then I can throw away the paper when it's all filled up. And I usually just tape the back of this. So, hi, Jean. Okay, so that's a little bit about opening and shutting ink pads and a piercing mat. Look at me and my notes here. So, ha! <laughs> all right. So, Stacy Ray, she was the fabulous winner of the, of the marker set last night. I did a live drawing for uh, everybody who liked and shared. No, it was sharing the game night. Girls, I had an overwhelming response. I had 10 people sign up in the last two days for the game night. Wow, I'm super excited. I have figured out that I can cap it at 45, so I have a few more spots open. So if anybody wants to sign up, I will take two to three, possibly four more, and then I'm done. <laughs> so I had, uh, yeah, I'm so excited, you girls. This is gonna be the most fabulous Stampin' Up! game night and card workshop ever. Well, until the next one. <laughs> so, okay, so, but I wanted to say that Stacy Ray won the markers for that in case anybody was wondering. And then um, I, we talked about the Pierce mat. So I wanted to tell you girls, so exciting stuff today about the, uh, the She Shed. Okay, so I was talking to my cousin Kelly today, and she came up with a name for the She Shed. She's like, well, I think the She Shed is a cool name, but I think that we could come up with something better. So show me some love and some likes if you like this name. She's like, Chris, you should call it the Hive or the Beehive because you're gonna have a bunch of busy bees working and stamping with you in the Beehive. So. How do you like that? We're gonna call it the beehive, or just the hive for short, and we're gonna be a bunch of busy bees stamping away. <laughs> so I thought that was a fabulous, clever idea for a name for the she shed, and then we can decorate it with bee stuff. And I already thought of it, Stacy. You gave me the jar at the retreat, and we can put that in there for decoration. Yay! So, um, so Stacy made me a bee mask as well. So um, she's gonna be bringing up that this weekend. So yay! So lots of love for the beehive. Okay, cool. So I wanted to tell you that. And then the other thing is on the project, the Tim was here all day backfilling it. So girls, it is happening <laughs> even more. Um, almost half the backfill is almost around the edges of the frost wall. And I have my plumber already lined up and the electrician and the HVAC guy to start doing their prep work before the slab is poured. And I'm hoping the slab gets poured late next week. So yay, progress. Okay, so that. And then um, I wanted to talk about too, I have, I'll flip this down real quick. I have these wonderful bow makers. So girls, when you get card kits from me for class, hi Pamela, I always make your bows for you. It's a, it's a thing that I like to do to help you out to make sure you have a pretty bows. And these, I get these from Kathy Miller and Kathy Miller's customer's husband makes them. And I got five of them extra here. So they're only $5. So if anybody is in the market for some bow makers, I do have these here. And I just like to let you know that in case you're looking for some. So that's the bow makers. So I have a few of those. 
And you girls are liking the beehive. Yeah, isn't that awesome? <laughs> so very cool. So tonight's class is the Peaceful Poppies class. It features two bundles. So girls, the Peaceful Poppies can be found in the mini catalog on pages 24 and 25. And the cards that we're gonna be making tonight feature the designer series paper, the designer's paper here, I've got some little samples here, such pretty paper, we use this one, and we're using this red one, not that one, not that one, I think maybe not that one, but we're using this one, and on the back side we're using this one, and so the cards are super, super pretty and the paper just makes it so elegant. So th that's the designer series paper. It is going to be retiring. We used both of these bundles. We're using the sequins, the white seam binding ribbon, and the peaceful elements, the peaceful poppy elements brought in. So for this sweet class, it's basically a super sweet class here that we're doing. And what happens is when I do my bundle classes, if you sign up with, um, when you sign up for the class, and you either buy, like for in this case, there were two bundles that were available. If you bought them by a certain day as your registration for class, then you got a free gift from me. And so you also got the class for free. So I am very excited to announce that I had a brand new customer from Michigan sign up for this class. Her name is Bobby. And she got, I don't think mail is really bad in Michigan right now. And so she's going to be watching the replay, but her card kit should arrive in the next day or two. And she said that they are on like slim force of male people working in the Detroit office. And so hopefully she'll get her card kit soon. But with her packet and also Melissa Madsen, she, they both got the elements for free. So they bought the bundle by a certain date. They got the class for free and they got a pack of these embellishments for free. So when I do a bundle class like that, I always offer a free gift if you buy the bundle with me. So here's my class schedule. Uh, for the summer and I wanted to announce, I know you. some of you have your catalog, some don't, but the bundle class for June is the ornate garden class. And what I'm giving away free with that, if you buy either of the bundles from me, you can pick out the Gilded Gems or the Ribbon Combo Pack. And then the flowers for every season, that's those sunflower cards that you might have seen pictures of. I'm doing that for the bundle class in July. And you can get for free the gems that are part of that suite if you buy the bundle from me. And then in August, it is um, in good taste. If you do that bundle class with me with buying the bundle, by the certain date, you get the elements for free. So every month, I do a bundle class where I feature a bundle and then I always give away a free gift if you purchase that bundle with me by a certain date. And then you get the cards for free. So thank you to those two for for purchasing the bundles for me. And I also have a special treat. There were 17 people who signed up for the class and I'm gonna give away a door prize to one of those lucky gals. And I'm gonna do a random drawing at the end of the class for one person to win. What do I have here? I have, oh, oh it's, well, you would think that it's right in front of me, but <laughs> where it is, here it is, I found it. I'm gonna be giving away a pack of the champagne um, petal pink um, ribbon. So some one of the 17 that signed up for class is going to get a door prize tonight. So super excited. All right, girls. Well, are you ready to make some cards? I think I've jibber jabbed enough <laughs> and you're ready to make cards, right? So um, let me bring my camera back down. You can see I got my hot mess of purple paper here and we're going to start with the first card. So girls, you know, I like, hi, Becky. You know, I like to share with you, like when I get inspiration from somebody and like why I case card, or um, why I do swaps and what casing is all about. So this is the card that is for class tonight. And it's a beautiful black and white with rich raspberry with this beautiful satin bow. And I wanna show you where I got the inspiration for this card. So don't think I make up all these things on my own. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> this was the card that I got in a swap. And you can see that they're similar. But what I did is I dressed it up just a little bit by adding, and actually Gina helped me design this card. Gina and I had safer stamping together time last week. And so we added a layer of white. We changed it to be satin instead of black paper. We added a bow here. And 
uh, we just dressed it up just a little bit more. So we made it, just added a few more layers. But I wanted, I don't know whose card this was, but it was a swap card that I got. And so that's just to show you that how you can get a card and make it your own. So and that the stamp appears, oh, Francie just mentioned on the Facebook Live here that the stamping pierce mat is not getting carried over. That gray foam mat for $5 is while supplies last. Hi, Tony. All right, so what do we got here, girls? So everybody who signed up for this class and my team are gonna get a PDF tutorial with the four cards, including pictures and instructions. So I emailed that out a little bit earlier. So here we have our black card base. This measures eight and a half by five and a half, and it is scored in the middle at four and a quarter. And all you're gonna do is flip this over and burnish the edges with your bone folder. That gives you a nice crisp edge here so it's not rolled. And then what you've got in your card, oh girls, I have to announce, for those girls that got the card kits, one of your card kits had two sprinkles of sequins in it. So just be careful when you open up <laughs> your card kits. <laughs> so I don't want you to have a hot mess of sprinkles all over. <laughs> so, okay. Then we have here two pieces of Whisper White. And one, they're the exact same size. One is four. Uh, they're both four by five and a quarter. And one is for your inside mat. And one is for your outside mat. Nothing really happens with the outside mat. It's just a layer to give it a nice white border. Then there's a piece of Rich Razzleberry, and I gotta find my little note cheat sheets here. The Rich Razzleberry measures five and one sixteenth by three and 13 sixteenths. You girls, there's a lot of sixteens in these cards tonight, so <laughs> you could definitely change your margins a little bit and make it so it's not sixteenth. But when I do the 16th, it gives you just enough white border where it's not overwhelming white and it's not too little. So this again was 5 and 1 16th by 3 and 13 16th. You have a piece of the designer series paper, DSP or designer series paper. If this is 5 and 1 16th by 1 and a half. Okay, so that's just going to fit right on top of here like that. We've got a piece of the satin ribbon. Ooh, it was really, <laughs> it was slippery. <laughs> Slipped right through my fingers. So this is the black satin ribbon. This is also retiring. It is silky smooth. Um, nice ribbon to add to a card. And there, we actually are using it in two cards tonight. So everybody in your kit, you have a piece that measures about six inches. And in your kit, you also have one of the black bows that I've made for you. So you'll set that off to the side. Now I did a little stamping ahead on here and I don't know why, but for you girls at home, you are gonna have to stamp um, your Whisper White piece here. I have die cut out the, the label here. That is part of the painted labels dies. So you will have your piece here and what you're gonna need to do is stamp a sentiment and the flower here. So the stamp sets look like this, this is the called the Painted Poppies stamp set, and I got this flower out of there. And I also pulled out this splotchy looking one. We're gonna use that as our background. So for you girls that have this die cut already, just grab your Memento ink pad. And what you're gonna wanna do is ink up. So this is a fabric pad. So what I generally do with the black Memento pad is I wiggle a little bit and then I tap and then it really gives me a lot of good ink on the stamp. And I, I can't remember why I stamped them with Deepest Sympathy already, but for you girls, all you gotta do is sneak the sentiment on there and sneak the flower on there. If you don't have this exact stamp set or the words, you can improvise. Any flower will look pretty here, any sentiment will be good there. So that's Memento, and I'm gonna make Brandon proud and clean, oh, you know what, girls? Here's my trick. As long as you have, <laughs> as long as you have your stamp here, you might as well go ahead and stamp your inside. I like to decorate the inside of the card with the same kind of stamp that's on the outside. So I'm gonna put that flower like so on here. I always like when I'm stamping flowers and such that come out of the ground, I try to make sure they hit the bottom edge of the paper so that it looks like they're grounded. And then on top of it, what I've pulled in here is, this is a stamp set that will be retiring called Flourishing Phrases. This is my go-to stamp set for sympathy sayings. 
And there's a saying in here saying, prayer, praying that your heart will be lifted by the many loving thoughts that surround you today. So let's see if I have, <laughs> it fell off. I have it right here. <laughs> it fell off the block. So this is the old style stamp that before they made the cling and it doesn't like to stick on the block so well. So I have to generally push this one on here to make it stick. And again, these are words. So what I like to do with words is practice on the bottom edge of my paper to make sure they're straight in relation to the sticker. And if they're not, we can flip it over. So, okay, that works for me, girls. <laughs> all right, so now you can shut your ink pad up. And then always, it's a good practice to stamp off before you go to clean and see what happened there. That doesn't like to stick on there because that's an, I've had this stamp set for many years. It's been around the block a time or two. So that's clean. And then we're making Brandon proud here. So this chamois is $8. It is the, one of the best investments you can make for cleaning your stamps. Then get yourself one of these clear cases. It really helps to keep your, you know, you clean up stuff really nice. You can use your stamp and mist on there as well. All right, girls, now that you've got your flower stamped and you've got your sentiment stamped, we got a little bit of coloring that we're gonna do. So if you look over here, there's a poppy and we're gonna color that in and it's kind of hard to see it, but it's got a little splash of red, which ties in with the red over here. And then we're using Rich Razzleberry, Mossy Meadow, and then the Poppy. So this will be a quick color for you girls while, while you're watching here. You can color along. All I'm going to do is to splash a little bit of this Poppy. It's Dark Poppy Parade at the base of it. And then I'm going to follow in with some Dark rich razzleberry. And in this case, I'm gonna kind of hit the poppy slightly, but not too much. Cause I wanna see a little bit of the poppy color come through. And I like this dark rich razzleberry. So I'm gonna make the buds on them, the dark rich razzleberry as well. Then I'm gonna follow up here with light rich razzleberry. And what I'm gonna do with that is color the entire area that's not colored. <laughs> that sounded like snot, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was not colored. And then what I'm doing is going over the, the line where the dark rich razzleberry was. And I'm gonna blend that ever so slightly. And what that does is it makes the line go away. That's what blends are all about. They help you color and give you... So right now, if you only color the area that is white, you end up with a line. I don't know if you can see it, but you can see there's a pretty distinct line there. So what you do is you go in a circle right over the top of that, and it helps to, to smooth out that edge. And so what it does is it softens the line. So that's what blends are all about. Then we're gonna follow in here. I've got the light mossy meadow, and you're gonna just draw your wispy stem here and color in your leaf. So I'm using the fine tip on this marker. Uh, it works so much better when you have a small little area. I'm just lightly feathering. If you go outside the lines, it's not the end of the world. It's quite all right. They do make something called a color lifter that helps to lift up the color a little bit. Um, but I mean, this little stem is right there. Okay, girls, that's it. <laughs> that's all the coloring you get from me today. <laughs> well, for this card, I should say. All right, so there's a little bit of prep work we have to do on this rich razzleberry piece. And so we're gonna be using Versamark a lot tonight. This is that splotchy stamp, and this is a Versamark pad. So a Versamark pad is primarily used when you want to emboss, heat emboss. And we are definitely going to be doing some heat embossing tonight on one of the cards. But what Versamark does on a card is it, it allows it to look just like the same color as the the stamped image, like it's tone on tone is what it is. And so what you'll do is you're gonna grab the splotch and you're going to stamp random splotches all over this rich razzleberry. And I'm gonna show you up close. I know right now in the camera, you probably cannot see this whatsoever, but when you use Var Versamark on the same, like on the card base, it just, there, see that? That, and it's gonna stay looking like that.
So it makes it look like you're stamping this ink color in a very light tone on top of it. So that's what Versamark does when you stamp on it with like a, a background stamp like this. So it's a very, very cool technique to use your Versamark pad. Like let's say you didn't have Rich Razzleberry ink and you wanted to get a look like that, that's all you gotta do. Okay, so we have our designer series paper here. I'm gonna flip this over and put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of this. And then another trick too, when you girls are cutting your designer series paper at home and uh, you wanna pay attention to how the pattern is. In this case, the flowers are going up and down like this. So you don't wanna cut the paper going this way and then have it, it, the flowers would be crooked. So a trick when you're cutting designer series paper is to make sure you check the pattern direction before you cut it. <clears throat> so you notice I had to trim a little bit off of that. Then grab your tear and tape and put a couple pieces of tear and tape. You're gonna create a little ribbon sandwich and you wanna put the tear and So tear and tape is a very, very strong, permanent double-sided tape. Uh, it's a very good investment. You can use it like tape or you can use it like double-sided tape. And what I like to do, I don't generally put any kind of adhesive on the front here. I like to just tuck my tails behind, make sure I'm eyeing it up from the front to make sure it's straight. And then I flip my tail over and add a couple more pieces of tear and tape over that. This is gonna create a really nice bond to the card base so this ribbon won't fall out. I started doing this probably 15 years ago before I used to only put uh, tape under the ribbon but what would happen is the tape would eventually dry and the ribbon would fall out. When you secure your tails behind your ribbon, or your card base like this, your, your mat, it really, they won't come out of there at all. So now this is going to go onto our Whisper White mat, <clears throat> just like this. And then what we're gonna do is flip this over and we're gonna add some more liquid glue to this. And this will get adhered onto the front of our basic black mat. <clears throat> Again, I use this liquid glue because it allows me to wiggle it around until I get it exactly where I want it. Oh yeah, Francie, she just put on here the, a note that they will be selling cling material so that we can get, um, so that we can get our older stamps to stick better. So yes, that is super exciting. All right, hi Becky. Then we flip this over. Becky, I saw you registered for game night. That's so exciting. Yay, <laughs> I saw it. All right, girls. I'm curious who's gonna have the luckiest numbers of them all next week. So flip that over and put your inside in. Isn't that look sharp? This, this pretty pink, this purpley flower really stands out nice against the black. Then we have our little label here. Girls, I wanted to show you my trick about opening up dimensionals. I could have opened this up prior, but I wanted to make sure that I showed you this. So when you get these dimensionals, a lot of times people will open them up like this and then constantly open them, shut them open. And then you've got this sticky flap here that gets caught all over the place. I got so sick of that. So what I do is I take my scissors and I just basically cut that open like this. And now all I do is pull my sheets out like this. So there you go, and then that can go back in and out really nicely, and you don't ever have to deal with that little glue part getting caught. So what I'm gonna do for my mini dimensionals is put probably six of them on here, and then we're gonna pick off the backing. So if you've got nails, you can usually speed through that pretty good. Otherwise, grab out your pick tool, and you can pick them off as well. Now I've got this not centered exactly. I've actually got it a little bit more to the right. So you see a little bit more of the designer series paper here. So that will go down. And then we're gonna grab your, grab your bow and then grab your glue dots. And what I'm gonna do is pop a glue dot right on my ribbon there. And I'm gonna look at the bow. When you see this bow, Depending on how I tied it, there's a back and a front to it. So try to find the side that looks a little bit smoother, and that's your front, and that's gonna get squished right to the front. But look at your tails. <laughs> Those tails 
look crazy to me. And I like to show the tails who's boss. <laughs> so I will definitely use up to five mini glue dots on a bow. I really will. So like now look at it, it's like that. Put your glue dot down and then just stick your tails where you want them. Sometimes too, I'll even put a bow or a glue dot right behind the bow and get it to stick there. And like that one seems pretty good to me, so I won't even bother touching that. And so don't be afraid to use your glue dots, girls, and get your tails positioned exactly where you want them. And then once you have them, the last thing I do is I use my ribbon scissors and I trim the tails. So if you try to tip, trim your tails prior, you may get that frayed edge going on. So last thing I do on there is trim the tails. Well, that's not gonna be the last actually. We still have to bedazzle it. <clears throat> Grab your Stella pen. You gotta Stella something on here. Bonnie would be disappointed if you didn't Stella something. So you can Stella your little flower buds. And then <clears throat> one of your card kits, girls, has two or three sprinkles of sequins. I honestly did not go through and pick out certain colors for you. What I did is I opened this up and I went and I grabbed a couple sprinkles for you. So what you're gonna wanna do, you can either use your glue dots to do this, or if you've had a paper pumpkin in the past, you get these little glue dots in them. And so I like to use them. So what I'll do is I'll pick that off and then that will leave a little residue of glue. Oh my goodness, that wants to stick. That'll leave a little residue of glue and so you're gonna wanna put a few of the sequins. So these are the poppy sequins, and you're just gonna find a couple of the sequins. Now, I was thinking about it, girls. If you have more, you're gonna have extra sequins. So if you've bought the sequins already, you can just throw your extra ones back in the um, container that you have, or find yourself a little baggie and put them in there. So I picked black, or you could pick clear dimension um, sequins on here. Oh, that's gonna go this way actually. So here, actually when you see that glue dot through here, it, it actually adds a little bit of sparkle. It's really weird seeing that glue dot. So, all right, the trick with sequins is to cover them up. As soon as you're done with them, I recommend putting the cover on and putting them away. You do not want to spill those bad boys all over your your surface. <laughs> they, they're staticky. So there you go, girls. We made one card. Yay. So this is a really pretty sympathy card. I know that it's sad that you have to give a sympathy card, but, but whoever got this card would be so enamored by the card that you gave them. So yay, we got one done. Yay. How are you girls doing? Did you like that one? I'm so curious to, to know which one's your favorite card when we're all done. <laughs> so, all right, let's roll up the sleeves again. They seem to want to always fall down. All right, girls, we're going to go, whew, what do we want to do next? All right, we're going to go to this one next. So this is your fun fold. Yay. So look at this. It opens this way and then it opens this way. And my samples, I never glue the insides in. So I actually have that secured with a little washi tape. So that's why that's loose. But yay, this is our fun fold. Kelly, how are you doing? This is your first class with me. <laughs> are you able to keep up? <laughs> so the card that inspired me with this card was a swap card from D Slater. So let, check this out. This was her card. It goes like this and it goes like this. So completely different designer series paper and it's different colors and a different front. And so from this card, I did this card. <laughs> so I will have to say that I completely did this one myself. I did not have any other inspiration besides this card. Good, Kelly, I'm glad you're doing good. Okay, so this was my card that I cased. I always like to share that if I have that. So girls, you got lots of pieces. And I don't know if there was any way around how to put this in your kit, but you've got this whole stack of stuff like this. Um, Diane, you're the only one I didn't, you had the, you know, an extra kit here too. So I didn't have yours die cut. So I don't know if you had time to die cut them or if you can do that while I'm doing class, I'll try to talk a lot, <laughs> but you're going to definitely want to cut your pieces apart. So I will set them here so that you girls should probably pick your pieces too, but you've got your two different poppy sizes. These are all dies that are available in one of the die sets. And so you'll have two flowers two leaves and the leaves each have the vellum 
you've got the black foil inside here for this one and you have one for this. And then we have a little Calypso coral bud with the little stem leaf. So those are all the bits and pieces that we have for the flower front. And then you have the card base. All right, so I'll tell you measurements as we go too. So this is eight and a half by four and a quarter and it's scored at five and a half. So it's right there. So that's what makes it a traditional A2 card size. So once you have that folded, go ahead and burnish that edge like that, okay? So that's good. Then we have here, oh, I've got two people that wanna sign up for game night, yay. <laughs> Girls, it's gonna fill up. Oh my gosh, okay. I don't know uh, what's going on here, but we're gonna be pretending with this card a little bit. <laughs> so we have a piece of Poppy Parade here. It's five and a quarter by four, <laughs> and that's gonna go right here. Then for all you, everybody else, <laughs> I don't know why I don't have it, and I'm not gonna run upstairs and get it now, but this is a, a piece of designer series paper from the DSP. It measures five by three and three quarters. Hi, Wendy. Let's pretend that that's going right here. Okay, so play along with me, girls. <laughs> so that's gonna get glued right here. So for now though, what we can do is we can definitely glue this Poppy Parade one down because that has nothing contingent upon it. That will go here, just like that. All right. Now let's pretend I have my piece of designer paper that's going here, okay? We also have here um, a piece of Poppy Parade. This one measures four inches by two and three quarters, and that's our piece that's gonna go right here. And you can see I did it again. I did that splotchy, oh, there it is maybe. I did the splotchy look. So grab your Versamark pad and the um, that same stamp that we just used on the other card, and you're gonna do the same thing. Isn't that awesome? You're making the same kind of effect just with this Versamark pad, but now it's looking like you're stamping the Poppy Parade really softly on this piece. I wish I had a little assistant here to help me <laughs> with that designer paper, but your girls are gonna work with me here. So do you see that? You can see it's a little wet yet, and so that gives it a splotchy look. So once you've got that stamped, then you can go ahead and glue that to the front of the pool party of this base. So that's gonna go right here. All right. Now, you have this piece right here. That is in your card kit, this piece. This measures eight by three inches and it's scored directly in the middle at four. So when you fold it, it just basically folds in half. All right, then there's a mat for that. This mat is also Poppy Parade and it measures, uh, what does it measure? Three and three quarters by two and three quarters, which is the same size as this white piece. That's also three and three quarters by two and three quarters, except for this white piece will go on the inside, okay? So that's a little bit how we're building this. Our piece of designer series paper is three and a half by two and a half, and that's gonna go right on here. So we're gonna just do a little bit of gluing, girls. So flip over your designer series paper. Oh, I got a big goo ball. <laughs> oh, this will forever remind me of Gina, because anytime she stamps with me, she gives me her goo balls, and they look like boogers. <laughs> so those are our glue boogers. Okay, put that on top of the pool party piece. Now flip that over. And, oh, Linda Davis, you're joining us from Texas. Yay! You love my cards. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I love that you're all the way in Texas watching me. That's amazing. Okay, that's going to go onto our pool party layer here. And hi, Angie. So... We are gonna stamp our inside. In the inside here, I have happy birthday. I chose a little bit smaller sentiment because there's not a lot of room in here. If you girls want a little bit more room to write, what I would recommend doing is putting another mat of Whisper White on the back here, and then you can write a whole long love note if you want. 
But for right now, what I'm gonna do is use the basic black here, the Tuxedo Black Memento. And I'm gonna stamp the happy birthday. Again, I squiggle, I wiggle, wiggle with it. And then I tap a couple times. And then I'm gonna stamp that right in the middle. I like to stamp my sentiments a little closer to the top because then I can sign something here. So um, I would put a little flower, let's see here. I don't know if there's a lot of room, but here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this same flower and we're just gonna put it off to the side. So this is perfect if you don't like to write anything <laughs> or very much in your cards. You can just basically say, love you, and then sign your name. But if you, again, if you do wanna have a little longer love note, put a piece of white back here. All right, so now girls though, I gotta color this. <laughs> I can't have a flower in the inside of my card if I don't color it. So I'm gonna keep it simple though. And I'm just gonna color the entire thing with one Poppy Parade Dark Blend. I honestly don't have the light one down here. So no shading on this one. The person who gets this will never know that I did not shade it. <laughs> so, all right, in that case then, we are gonna use the Light Mossy Meadow to color this right here, the stem and the little leaf. All right, boom, perfect. Hi, Melissa. We'll be, oh yeah, so Melissa, I checked the inventory status report and the Memento Black ink and the Stazon Black both show an ETA of June 15th. So fingers crossed that it doesn't get delayed again. Uh, so I know it was originally sometime in the middle of May and then it got pushed to May Fifth, like May 30th, and then it got pushed to June. So, oh, Stacy lost sound and she's coming back. I hope everybody else is doing good. Give me some thumbs up if you're still doing good. So now we're just prepping this. We're also going to start working on our poppy, okay? So grab your pieces. I hope I gave Diane enough time to get her poppy in order, <laughs> her die cutting. So this is where you're definitely gonna wanna grab your Stella pen. <clears throat> I, uh, I like to Stella things before I glue them down. Stella girls, it's a girl, Stella's a girl's best friend, girls. <laughs> so I, I know in the camera, you really can't see the little bit of bling or sparkle that is being put on this card, but I'm gonna do that first. If by doing this first, and when you need to replenish it, there's two buttons on the side here that you push. And my guy is almost, she's almost empty. So I'm not gonna get much out of her. Uh, I need to fill her up with some rubbing alcohol and water. So that, and then also girls, you're gonna wanna Stella your pretty vellum leaves here. Give them a little bit of bling and then grab this other one here. And last but not least, you'll wanna do, oh, get back here, little guy. You're gonna wanna do your little bit of coral, <clears throat> excuse me, and your little stem there. So now you've got the Stella done. So. Assembly. All right, girls, if you have a liquid glue, I, I, I use liquid glue. Those that have the fine tip glue pen, that works too. I'm not good with the fine tip glue pen. <clears throat> Kelly, you lost me twice already. I don't know if it has something to do with the internet, but I got a lot of thumbs up when people asked, if I asked if people were doing okay. So hopefully you can just make it right back in here and watch. So those that have the kits, you wanna make sure that you line up your pieces before you glue. So in this case, this black fits directly over the top of the Poppy Parade. And I do not put glue all over the place. I'm strategic about my glue. Um, oh, you wanna hear more about the Stella. So I'm gonna finish putting it together and I'm gonna leave her there so that you can see this. All right, a <clears throat> little bit of glue there. Now I'm strategic about where I put this glue. Uh, light to the squeeze. You do not want to squeeze so hard that the glue comes out all over the place and you end up with sticky glue mess. So I'm just gingerly putting a little glue in some random spots on the outside. So you can see where I put my glue, not a lot. This is important now. <laughs> you wanna put this down very, very carefully and in the right spot, cause you don't wanna wiggle around with it. So I'm gonna line that up here I'm gonna line that up, line that up, pick it up, and now just make sure it's lined up good, girls. That's what I'm doing. And that little bit of glue is gonna be enough for it to stick on here. Then you have a center, the floral center. I like to make them look 3D. So I will take these little ends 
and fold them all up like that. And you're gonna take, where do I got my little guys here? Take a little mini glue dot, put that right behind, and that's gonna go in the center of the flower. All right, so that is black foil paper. It is retiring and not carrying over. So if you wanna score any of that, it's $5 for two 12 by 12 sheets. You wanna get that before it's gone. We're gonna do the same thing about this flower. So you're gonna be strategic about where you put glue so you don't get it all over. I don't go all the way around, but I pick spots every half inch or so. And again, you wanna be very careful when you set this down and you wanna get it lined up just right. And now you've got, I hope you girls didn't lose this little piece. That is a, a bugger to lose. Same thing with this though. Pull these little guys up. Now, this one I'm not gonna use a dimensional. It's such a little area. It's better just to put a little bit of glue on this one. And then you're gonna put that right in the center of that flower. All right, so you've got that ready to go. So we're just, I feel like I'm in second grade and I'm just doing arts and crafts and I'm gluing <laughs> pieces together. All right, now we've got this cool outline of a leaf here. And Becky likes my cards too, I love it. <laughs> so I don't wanna use a lot of glue on this vellum because you might see it a little. So I'm hardly putting any glue. I put one, two, three, four, five little dots. And now when you put this down, you wanna line up. It goes on the left side more of this green. So this is pear pizzazz. And so because I didn't put glue all over, it's letting my little vellum leaves on the ends here come up a little bit, so it gives it dimension. This one is gonna be a little bugger, but we're gonna put a little bit of glue, same kind of concept, just I'm gonna put a little here, little there, and maybe a little there. And then that gets put down. Now, when you get glue on your fingers, it makes them sticky, but this lines up right along that edge as well. And last but not least, we have our little coral bud here. So this is Calypso Coral. I'm putting a little dot of glue right at the bottom, and that's where our leaf, like the stem thing, is going to attach. All right, so we got that. So girls, how are you doing? <laughs> are you assembling flowers with me okay? Do you have a big flower, a little flower, and your two leaves, and then you have the little bud? So. Here's where you're gonna have to pretend with me, girls. You're gonna pretend that my piece of designer series paper is on here, and <laughs> I'm not gonna officially glue this, but what you're gonna wanna do is put a little bit of glue right here. And as you go down, you're gonna kinda center this, you're gonna shut this, and you're going to, so with liquid glue, it allows you to move around a little bit. So now that you've got it exactly where you want it, press it down, and because you have glue under yours, it's gonna be glued exactly where you want it. I'm, it, it actually looks pretty with just the red, but I am, when I'm done with class, I'm gonna go upstairs and get myself a piece of five by three and a three quarter paper. I'm gonna put that there, okay. So we're pretending now that my designer series paper is here, work with me. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start assembling our flower and figure out how you want your flower to be positioned. I think I like, this little bit here, I want that covered up. So I'm gonna put that to that side and then this one's gonna go here. Something I learned with this card is you cannot have your flower hanging over the edge like this because when you go to open this up, it will get caught when you open it up. So you have to make sure when you glue this flower down that you're to the left of this blue margin. And so how I'm gonna put this flower down, watch this girls, I am actually going to use my mini dimensionals and I'm gonna put one, two, three, four of them around the outside. Yes, that's correct. I'm not gonna put one in the middle. I like dimension. So what I'm gonna actually do in this case is I'm gonna put liquid glue in the middle and we're, I'm gonna actually take this off of here because it's wiggling a little bit. So what we're gonna do is put that right like so and it's actually this way. So it's gonna be flat in the middle. And you're wondering, oh my gosh, the leaves, the leaves. We get, we'll, we'll get the leaves in, don't worry. But what happened here is I put it flat in the middle because I have a dimensional underneath this black 
uh, center. And so that helped it go a little bit flatter in the middle. Then we have this leaf right here. And we're gonna have to see where our dimensional was because if our dimensional is right there, we're just gonna pull that right up and we're gonna tuck our leaf in. So it's important now that you're on your card so that your leaf isn't sticking out too far. So I'm gonna put a little bit of liquid glue right along just the base of the leaf. And your, you girls have yours already glued down. And so all we're gonna do is tuck this right underneath the poppy. You wanna make sure you're not coming out the left margin here. And then you're gonna take this leaf and put a little bit of liquid glue. Now, if you like to attach your leaves behind your flower and then put them down, you can, but I like to get my flower centered uh, where I want it. And now I've got that leaf here. Oh, Jean, you should have bought a kit. Yes, you should have. <laughs> but I have none left now, unfortunately. And oh, you can actually make these yourself if you get the right materials. <laughs> so girls, I'm gonna do the same thing here. I wanna pop up the top of the flower and I want the bottom to be flat. So don't be afraid to do two different types of adhesive on something. So now this is gonna go along the bottom here and I've got the bottom flat, and now this one's popped up. Okay, and then you're gonna use a little bit of glue behind here at the stem, and use a mini glue dot at the top, and our stem is gonna be coming out like, oh my gosh, I put a dimensional right there, so we gotta pull that up, and that's gonna go like that. Okay, girls, <laughs> all right. We need some sequins on here though. So you girls have your little hot mess of sequins in one of your kits. So, oh, Soledad, you and Isabella wanna make cards with me. You like these poppy cards too, yes? So I'll tell you girls, when you see the pictures on my Facebook page or if you see them on my website, I'll tell you, they never do it justice. But now that you get to see this live in action, it really, it really shows you how pretty the cards are. So I'm putting my little glue dots on here. This is where your take your pick tool comes in really handy. Grab, use your pick tool here. Now these sequins, there's flower shapes and there's flat ones. And I like flat ones, honestly. And then there we're gonna put a little red one just to sparkle it. And here we're gonna put, no, we don't wanna use that color. We can't see that. Let's use a gold one here though. Let's see what gold looks like. I don't know if I like the gold, but I can always pick it off later, <laughs> but just to show you what the gold looks like. Okay, so we're pretending, right? You're playing along with me. <laughs> I have my piece of designer series paper in here. All right, how's that look? Okay, so pretend that my DSP is there and now you've got, it opens like this and it opens like this. It's just a really great design. So fun fold here. This is a fun, fun fold, isn't it? So here we go. That's really what it looks like for you girls that have them at home. You have your DSP underneath there and opens up. There you go. So we've got two done. Yay. Give me some love if you liked that one. Girls, I need to take a drink of water. Otherwise, I'm not going to make it all night. Mm -hmm. i got to stay hydrated. All right. So Char was asking about the Stella pen. And I set it right here so that I would not forget. So what I'm gonna do is I'll actually flip this over and get a, look at me, <laughs> that's from our night, from our in color. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna put this here. So Char was asking for a little bit more details about the Stella pen. Stella pen is $8, it lasts a very long time. If I remember correctly, Bonnie made hers last a whole year <laughs> before she needed a new one. There's a solution in here and it's filled with glitter and it comes out this barrel here. But what happens is eventually it runs out and there's still a whole bunch of glitter in here. Like if you hold it up to the light, um, this actually says 418 of 2019. So what you do if you wanna refill this, I recommend using a take your pick tool. Oh, Arliss likes the card. Yay, Char likes the card, good deal. So there's this black like lip on here. Take your pokey tool and you're gonna wedge that. I hope I don't make a hot mess here, girls, but you're gonna wedge, I did good. You're gonna wedge that underneath and this barrel comes out. So look at all that glitter that's in here yet. All that is glitter and it just doesn't have anything liquid to attach onto. And I don't know if you can see in there, all that black, 
Uh, there was just a certain angle. There, there's a whole bunch of black down there. That's all glitter, girls. So what you're gonna do is go to the kitchen sink and fill it like half full of water. And then you're gonna go to your medicine cabinet or underneath your <laughs> bathroom sink, wherever you have the rubbing alcohol, and you're gonna fill it with rubbing alcohol. You do not wanna fill it too full because if you fill it too full, when you put this back in here, it's gonna ooze all out on you and you don't wanna waste all this precious glitter. <laughs> And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna snap that back down and you're gonna spin this back on. And you have to be careful though. The solution that originally comes in Stella is a little bit thicker and so it doesn't run out. But when you put water and rubbing alcohol in here, you wanna shake it up over a plate or over the sink or over something that is not paper. You're going to press the two sides here that say push. You're gonna squeeze them and more of this glitter will come into the barrel. Now, if you squeeze too hard, it's gonna come running right out and it's gonna go all over everything and raise your hand if that has happened to you because I've seen it happen here in class and I think it happened with Linnea when the girls came to class uh, back in March. So that's how you rejuvenate your Stella, girls. She will last a lot longer. <laughs> all right, I think some of you knew that, but some of you may not have known that. So, all right, next card, girls, is this one. Ooh, ah. This is petal pink. It can be any color, any light color. Think blue, think purple, think yellow, think like a soft orange. It's just soft. So the card that I cased, I'm gonna show this to you girls. You're gonna be like, wow, she copied that. And I did. This card was made in blue and this came from Barb Mulliken. And I just thought it was just beautiful. Hi, Dawn's back watching, yay. This card was just beautiful. Now look what I did different though. I dressed it up a little. I added a little bit of black ribbon and I put a cutesy bow on the side. Otherwise, oh, and I added some bling. I added a little bit of um, sequins here. <laughs> yep, just squeeze too much. <laughs> you don't want to squeeze Stella too much. <laughs> so this was the card that I cased. It was absolutely gorgeous, but I wanted to do it in a different color. I wanted to color my flowers different and I just spruced it up a little. So there you go how I got inspired on that one. So girls, what you're going to do here you're gonna grab your kit and you got all your pieces. So there is a tufted embossing folder. Hey Kathy, you're good. You can always watch the replay from the beginning because I already talked about the ink pads and the piercing mat. So you'll wanna watch it over from the beginning. Here's our tufted, it looks like a quilt top. It's gorgeous. I am pretty sure that this is retired and it's gone, it's gone, gone, I think. If somebody can confirm that, but I'm pretty sure it's gone. So, but you could use anything else, the, um, any other embossing folder that has a soft look to it. So we're using petal pink with black here, girls. Your petal pink here is eight and a half by five and a half, and it's scored at four and a quarter. Uh, my piece isn't scored because I failed to score it for myself, but all I have to do is fold it in half, grab your bone folder, and you're gonna burnish the edge like so. And this is a horizontal card, so you gotta be careful, not that you're thinking it's like this, it's like that. And let's see here, we have a piece of Whisper White. The Whisper White measures four by five and a quarter. This is gonna be for our inside mat. So I'm just gonna set that in here. We have a piece of black. This is basic black. And I'm looking for the card here, right here. Basic black measures five and one eighth this way by three and seven eighths this, seven eighths this way. Our petal pink nestles right inside that. And our petal pink measures, <laughs> you girls are gonna hate me, but four and 15 sixteenths times three and 11 sixteenths. So that's that mat. We have a couple more pieces here. This black measures three and 11 sixteenths by seven and, no, two and seven sixteenths. And then these two pieces are the same. This is Ver the vellum cardstock. Stampin' Up makes, they sell this. <clears throat> you can get that through me as well. It's cardstock though, vellum. It's not thin and chintzy. It's, it's got some thickness to it. And the vellum and the white both measure three and a half by two and a quarter. And these are gonna layer over them. Like this vellum will layer right over that. And then that will get nestled right inside our black piece here. So we're gonna set those to the side. I have this black satin ribbon I pulled in again and another bow for you. So we'll be needing those. And everybody who got the kits for me, your piece is already embossed, yay. So all you have to do is flip that over and put a little bit of adhesive on the back side 
of this mat, which will get glued onto the black mat. And you're just gonna wanna center that in there as best you can. Now we're gonna make ourselves a little ribbon tear and tape sandwich again. So flip over your piece and find your tear and tape. And you're gonna put a couple pieces, one on each side, more towards the center. Now the trick with the tear and tape is the more you press it down, the easier it is to pick it off. Grab your ribbon and then center that as best you can top to bottom. Flip your tails over and squish them to the tear and tape. And then grab yourself a couple more pieces of tear and tape and put them right over the ribbon. And you can pull those off and adhere it with a little bit more glue. So you do not need to put more glue where, oop, I went really close to the edge. <laughs> you don't have to put more glue where this is because that's gonna be really strong adhesive there. So now what you can do is adhere this to your card base. So it's the black is a little bit smaller, so you're seeing more petal pink come through. So that's good. So we've got this prepped and ready to go. So now we get to do some stamping. The stamp set is again this Painted Poppies, and it is this flower set right here that we're gonna use. And in this case, I need sympathy cards, girls. I don't know why, I know why. I shouldn't say that I don't know why, but I'll tell you, birthday cards and sympathy cards are the cards that I use the most or sell the most. So I'm gonna make this one into a sympathy card again. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp some of these flowers in the bottom corner. So in this case, we're gonna be using both of the, the black inks that Stampin' Up! sells. They sell two. They sell this Memento pad, which is a water-based stamp pad, and they also sell the Stazon. The Stazon is your permanent black ink. They are two different ink pads used for two different things. This water base will clean up just fine with your chamois and water, but if you're using Stazon, you need to have the Stazon cleaner that, that we sell. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do our regular water-based stamping. This black memento is what you use with the alcohol blends. So you can see in here what I've done is I've got just some flowers in the bottom. I did not put them all, so I'm only gonna stamp a few. And I have found that with this stamp, those stems don't always hit the bottom how I, um, when I stamp it, sometimes I stamp it up too high. And if you find that happens to you and your stems are not reaching the bottom, just take a black marker and draw them down so that they are hitting the bottom. Okay, so as long as we have this stamp dirty, we're gonna grab this piece right here. And this one's a little bit bigger, so it, this is kind of like the, the borderline of where I stamp a stamp upside down or if I, if I ink it the other way. So again, I was wiggle, wiggle, wiggle with it and then tap, tap, tap. And what we're gonna do is center this in the middle of this Whisper white piece. And I'm gonna give it a second to soak into the paper. A lot of girls are asked, they ask me in class, how do you get yours to look so nice? Well, look at this. I'm letting it sit on the paper for about five to 10 seconds. And it really allows the ink to soak into the paper. If you don't do that, it's gonna look splotchy or not colored in all the way. So think that's it for this. I have the cover here. Then, oh, we're not done with this quite yet. We're also, this one's gonna be a sympathy. So I've got this over here. I cannot wait for those cling sheets to come. So what we're gonna do is stamp our sentiment on here. You wanna check it to make sure you don't have any. <laughs> okay, girls, if that happens to you, what you do is you, you show it who's boss. You put a little bit of your tape runner on it. And what happens is that gets your blocks a little sticky, but you can always use rubbing alcohol to clean off your blocks. So, all right, we're gonna stamp our sentiment right in the middle here towards the top. So we have that ready. Now I think we're done with the memento and we're gonna set that off to the side. We're gonna do a little coloring, girls. The colors that we need for this one are Calypso Coral, combo and then the mossy meadow so if you don't have these exact colors at home use something similar and you're like well where do you do the green well honestly i'm just doing it right over the top of these stems and there is nothing really to color in 
But when you add this little bit of green, I'll show you up here up close, it adds a little bit of green. So I'm basically drawing right over this. Hey, Chris. So just draw right over the tops of this just to add a little bit of color. So we're gonna be putting vellum over the top and that really frosts it and makes it look nice. So if you don't have this mossy metal blend, you could use old olive. You could also use colored pencils. You could use crayons for all for all that matters. Just You're just adding a little bit of green though to the stems here, all right? Oh, you're creating a card for your daughter, Chris. Yay, <laughs> that's all right. So you can always start and watch the replay from the beginning when we're all done. Because there was a couple, we've got two cards done already. We're cruising, girls. All right, grab your coral. And now, honestly, this is a little bit of busy work. So um, I'll do a few of them. Oh, actually, you know what? We're gonna have to do this one. So just talk amongst yourself. Tell me about your day. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if you're excited for the weekend. I'm going to take a, a minute here. And I'm just strategically coloring like every other one with the dark color. And then I am going to be coming back around with the light coral and filling in the, the ones that I skipped with the light coral. So are you girls excited? for? I know in Wisconsin here we got our... our Safer at home ban lifted. I don't know on a county by county basis how that's going to impact us, but I think we can hang out now. Isn't that super cool? It's going to change. I can't believe it's already been two months pretty much that we've been safer at home. And now we're going to be safer together stamping. Yay. <laughs> so fun. So Chris, you're going to have to share a picture of the card that you made. I love to see samples of stuff that you girls make. Um, I have a VIP customer page and I sometimes get my gals sharing cards that they make. It's always fun to get inspiration from others. So do you see this girls? I've got just a couple left. You saw what I'm doing. I'm using the, the thin end. That's a lot easier to control. I'm gonna come back and I can color this another time. The reason I colored this is because we have to put the card together. All right, here's a trick for you girls. I haven't stamped on vellum with you very much, but vellum is not paper per se. I mean, this is vellum cardstock, but it's like shiny, silky feeling. And if you used a water-based, this memento ink pad, if you would use that, it would smear all over. So you, that's why I've got the stays on ink pad. I absolutely love the way that the stamp, the stays on ink pad smells. So I always have to smell it when I use it. <laughs> that is weird, I know that. But until you own a stays on ink pad, you will not understand. So if you own a stays on ink pad and you already know that it smells like almond extract, <laughs> you understand why. I love the smell of almond extract in any baked good whatsoever <laughs> or liquor, but for it's <laughs> liquor for that matter. <laughs> so, all right. Oh, you're chasing the peacock. You're casing the peacock card. Cool. So. Same concept with this, it's a fabric pad. So I am wiggle, 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 and then I tap, tap, tap. So you have to be extremely careful when you go and stamp this. You cannot wiggle on your vellum. <laughs> so I went straight down, and I really am giving this a second. Now, this stays on ink pad is alcohol-based, and so it dries out fast. So you definitely wanna keep this covered. And did you see that there is a plastic covering on here? That's extra to help that it doesn't get dried out. So I'm waiting, 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 and I'm not wiggling. And I'm doing this because I really want this to look nice and crisp. And so there you go. So I've stamped the With Deepest Sympathy, and now this, it's a little wet. So if I'd run my finger across this, it would smear. So you wanna just give this a second. And we're gonna give it a second. So this'll get, this get put on here like this. So honestly, you could stamp any sentiment on here. If you didn't want with deepest sympathy, you could do birthday, thinking of you, thank you. All right, so we're gonna give that a second to dry. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stamp this a couple times, but you can see that this is permanent ink on here. So what we need to do, hi Brenda. So grab, um, I like to use a wet wipe as well. And so you're gonna, and I'm gonna take my stays on cleaner and you're gonna blot that off with a wet wipe. 
And you can see here, a lot of that ink just came off. And I do, I usually do two rounds like that to try to get that. Now it might stain it just a little bit, but you got most of it off. Now the thing with um, wet wipes is sometimes they leave little fibers on your stamp. So what I'll still do is I'll go back now here and I will clean this one more time with the chamois and I'll call it done then. So that's what stays on is all about. And I know Angela, you are getting the stays on and the memento. So now you know a little bit about both. All right, so this inside, we're gonna glue this to the inside of the petal pink. And did you girls learn a little bit with the stays on? I don't know how many of you knew that, but I always like to show you different things. I'll come back and color that, I promise. I won't give it away half colored. <laughs> so we have here this white piece. Now that you've got it all colored, ready to go, that is going to get adhered onto our basic black. And that will look something like that. And I'm doing the vellum last, so I'm gonna flip this over and grab my mini glue dots. I'm gonna do six of them again, like this, and pick those guys off. And that will get nestled right onto our card front over the ribbon. And I did do it, I don't know if you noticed on the card, I did do it a little bit more to the right because the bow adds a lot of weight on this side of the card. You could center it if you wanted, but then just know your bow is gonna be squished off to the side a little bit. So I am, when I put this on here, I'm gonna put this a little bit closer to the right. And now the trick for doing the, the vellum here. All I'm gonna do is gently put a couple dots of liquid glue. You don't need a lot because this is really tacky craft glue. Um, just a little bit. <laughs> and actually the bow is gonna cover up a little over here, so I'm gonna put a little bit more there. And now what you're gonna do is line up your vellum. If your vellum is a little bit big, it should, it should be okay. Like mine I'm noticing is a hair over, but you won't really see that. Now because it's the liquid glue, you can wiggle it. All right, so did you like how that vellum added a translucent look over the top of the flowers? Super cool look. Now grab your glue dots and we're gonna get glue dot happy. Now here's, I'm gonna put my bow on a different way, girls. I'm gonna show you a different look. So before you put your bow on, wait for this. I wanna show you a different way. So you may not like this, but you may like it. So let me just show you. I'm gonna put the bow on this way. I showed it to my mom the other day and she's like, why is your bow on like that? And I'm like, cause I thought it looked nice. Gina liked her bow like this as well. So I'm just gonna show this to you again. What I'm doing is putting a couple little glue dots underneath where the tail's gonna go. And then I'm gonna use my ribbon scissors so you can see what it looks like. And I'll hold both cards up so you can see what you like better. I mean, either one of them looks cute, but. So the, here, what I've done is I've put the bow facing off to the side. Tell me which one you like better. Do you like the bow looking? I know it's hard to see the bow, but I put the bow facing that way. And here I put the bow facing down. So again, you can put them however you want. It's your card, I always tell you that. It does not hurt my feelings if you change your cards up. And I will never know, honestly. <laughs> it's, it's however you envision it in your head and then make it happen. All right, so we're gonna finish off this card by putting a few of the sequins on. Now, I'm not sure if you have, I didn't count out clear or black sequins for people. And honestly, you probably can't even see these. I put, oh yeah, there they are. There it is. I put clear right there and I put one here. But watch, on this one, we're gonna put black sequins on. And we're gonna see how it looks. So some of you may have gotten these flowers that they're, they're flower shaped. They are definitely in here. So it's a mixture of different flowers. I'll use one of those on here so you can see what it looks like. They are pretty. I'll use a clear one down on the bottom as well. So, all right, girls. So you might catch it, but that is the flower shape of the sequin. So, <clears throat> all right, girls. How do you like it? <laughs> is it kid tested, mother approved? Hang on, I'll hold them next to each other. I gotta shut up my sequins. So which bow do you like better? Oh, Nancy likes it down. Okay. Yeah. If I had to pick, I also, I think I would pick it down, but I also think it looks cute this way. 
for some reason, when I see the bow facing this, it reminds me of a present, like a bow wrapped on a present. So give me some thumbs up if you like this card. I'm hydrating, so that's good. All right, girls, three down, one to go. How are we doing? We making it okay? I'm at an hour 20, so <laughs> nowhere near as long as the mountain air cards that we did last month. <laughs> wow. All right, this last one has some technique going on as well. We are definitely done with the sympathy stamps. We'll put that over here. We are gonna make this one into a thank you card. All right, if you do not own this Peaceful Moment stamp set, you might wanna think about it. It is one of my favorites out of the catalog and it's carrying over to the annual catalog. If you want a sentiment stamp that has different occasions, this is it. It's got happy birthday, with deepest sympathy, thank you, and congratulations, and thinking of you. Like if you didn't like with all of my heart, like let's say you don't love or you're not thinking of somebody with all my heart, you could definitely mask that off and still use the thinking of you. And then you've got some, so it's like an innie and outie stamp set. So you've got your like inside could be uh, wishing you happiness this special day with will bring. And then on the outside, you could have congratulations or happy birthday. And life is better with a friend like you. So when you have a stamp set, you have, when you have an innie and an outie, it's really great because that you can mix and match these. Oh, Arliss likes it down as well. Okay. So the great thing about a card like that with the bow is you can always <laughs> take and rearrange that by just pulling the glue dots off. So, but Peaceful Moments is a keeper, girls. And it really coordinates well with the Painted Poppies dies and all of the dies that go with this are outstanding. So you definitely want to think about getting that if you don't have it. In this card, we're going to be pulling in the Whisper White Crinkle Ribbon. We're going to use a thank you from the poppies. This is where I'm pulling in the elements. So that is part of the poppy suite. Now, <laughs> girls, don't give me any Crap, but <laughs> I kind of cased this card and it looks really similar. <laughs> but I really liked it. This is my fearless leader, Kelly Etchison's design. I got this from a swap from her and you can see it's got her name. And I just loved it. It's very bright and cheerful. I love the technique she used here and I couldn't wait to show this to you. She used the element here. She had a technique here that I want to teach you. It just was fun. So you can see though, when I use 16 of an inch, that's the difference. I don't know how much you can see it, but her black border on here is only, it's, it's not, it's, it's like a, an eighth of an inch where I have three sixteenths cut bigger on there. So you can see I've got a little bit more black showing. So that's a little bit of the difference. And I added a little baby bow and I added some sequins. So I did change it up a little bit, but credit due where credit is earned. So that one I cased as well. And we have here our thick white card base. This measures eight and a half by five and a half. It's scored at four and a quarter. And what you'll do is grab your bone folder and burnish your edge. All right. And I already have my inside stamped. <laughs> so, all right. So then we have a piece of basic black. Our black here measures um, five inches by three and three quarters. The designer series paper measures four and 13 sixteenths by three and nine sixteenths. And so that'll go on there. All right, so those are our measurements. So I'll stick that away. We can go ahead and glue. Oh, <laughs> look at that. That's the back of the other piece that I need <laughs> for the other card to finish it. But <laughs> we gotta glue over the top of this, girls. I know it's sad. <clears throat> when you have a piece of designer series paper that has two pretty sides, it's really hard to cover one up. <clears throat> that just is gonna get attached right onto here. Now, girls, we have some work to do. I want to show you this. This is the white seam binding ribbon. And you're going to watch me color this. So this is super cool. I, I don't know if you girls have done this yet, but you can either use your thick end or your thin end and you color it. So you got to be careful because when you use your marker on material and different surfaces, you don't want to wreck the tip. So I'm going to go like this. So you got to be a little careful. So I did notice that this brush tip 
kind of gets demolished when you, you color on things. So I honestly, I would recommend using the thin end. It might take you just a little bit longer, but it will protect your marker tip a little bit longer. The thin tip is a hard surface more where the brush tip is more soft and I don't know what I'm gonna say fluffy, but have you ever colored ribbon like this before? So look at that. It's so, so cool. So for the girls that got kits from me, I, t I did color all of your black ribbon for you because I did not know if you had a black blend or not. But this is a great use of your blends. So not only can you color on designer series paper, you can definitely color on your diamonds. You can color on pearls. You can color ribbon. So we have a ribbon that's white with silver edging and you could definitely color that. So you're wondering how much do I have to color? Well, let me tell you, I need enough to do a bow. And so here is the bow maker. Oh my goodness, in action. And I can't get that out. So I'm gonna use the scissors to help me. So here's how the bow maker works, girls. I haven't done this in a while. So when you color this ribbon, it actually makes it crunchy. It's really weird. It takes the softness out of it. But here's how you do the bow, girls. I'm left, I'm a righty, so I hold the, the loose end with my right hand. This loose end goes under, and then it goes over, and then it goes under, and now you just are going to tie it in a little knot. And the trick is, as you're tie, pulling your tails, pull them down and to the left and to the right. And you waste hardly any ribbon when you use that. And now you can trim that about where you need it and trim this about where you need it. Oh, my scissors didn't want to cut that. So we got our bow made. And now what I need is about six inches of this. And I hope that I'm really close. I think I am just slightly over, so I'm okay. So this will be good. I think I need a new ribbon scissors. <laughs> so, so there you go. We've colored our ribbon. You could honestly color the ribbon any color you want it to. And then you have matching ribbon for any project that you're working on. Now you have to, like the blends work best. So we've got ourselves our ribbon that's ready. So grab a couple pieces of your tear and tape. Now this is going to go closer to the bottom edge though. It's not going to be in the middle. So when you put this down, make sure it's a little bit closer to the bottom edge. And then flip it over and you can eyeball it from the front then. I did a little bit extra, but that's okay. Uh, I didn't want to have to run out. So now that flips over to the back. And I will, again, I like to attach a little bit more. Make my little ribbon sandwich. And this is, I actually have this popped up. So here's my deal. This is popped up. So I'm not going to peel this paper off of here. I'm just going to leave it on. Because if you would peel it off, it would be sticky and it might start sticking to your white card base. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna put, I'm, I'm gonna pop this up, girls. Once you pop, you can't stop. So I'm gonna fill it full of nine big dimensionals. Oh man, here we go. <laughs> Dimensional city here. So pull these backs off. Again, if you would have peeled that off, if this would get stuck to the white card base, it won't wanna pull off. So by leaving that, I just treated it like a piece of regular tape. Are you girls doing okay? I'm not seeing any comments, so I wanna make sure you're still awake. <laughs> All right, this gets attached to our white whisper white card, our thick whisper white card base. So you see that? It popped up a little bit. All right. All right, here's for the main event on this card. So these elements are part of what the Melissa and Bobby got for her, their free gift. This comes with, these are available at $6.50 for this pack. So that's not so crazy, actually. You get a couple sheets of the white, like thick cardboard ones, and they have different patterns and shapes. It comes with a sheet of the black. I think it's actually two, sh I can't remember. It's either one or two sheets of the black where there's circles, there's these big banners, and then there's these frilly little lace looking things. Then there's also a couple sheets of, what is it? Two sheets of watercolor. I know it's really hard to see this in the light. Let's see if I can get a glare right. But 
can kind of, see, oh, there it is. So do you see that there's poppies and there's leaves? This is watercolor paper. So you would watercolor this and then these all pop out. And then here are vellum flowers and leaves. And you can color these and frost the back of them with your blends. So that's what these elements are all about. And so in your card kit, you have one of these elements like this, and that's gonna get glued on the side. But first comes first, this right here, this thank you. So how do you do that? Well, you need to emboss it. How do you emboss? Grab your Versamark pad, boom, right here. If you girls have an embossing buddy, you could definitely buddy your label here. This embossing buddy is also disappearing. It's retiring. It's a chalk pillow. It helps with static electricity and sticky oils on your fingers. It helps so that the um, embossing powder doesn't stick to it. So what is embossing powder? Embossing powder that's teeny tiny pieces of plastic pellets is what it is. And we're going to stamp on here pour the powder, and then shake off any additional and heat it up with a heat tool. So girls, this is how I got hook, line, and sinkered with stamping 20 years ago. I'll tell you, this is what did it for me. I said I was only going to have a Christmas set, a birthday set that's for men, and a birthday set for women. That's all. I was going to own three stamp sets. You don't even want to know how many stamp sets I have now. So I am Sam. Oh, she's got her blue moon. Oh my God, her iced coffee blonde. I love it, Jean. I'm jealous. <laughs> oh, you're sitting by a campfire too. I love it, love it, love it. So I stamped the thank you over to the right a little bit so that I have room for my flowers. And so we're done with the Versamark. You can definitely put your cover on, move that out of the way. So I keep a little, I think this is Rubbermaid. I keep a little Rubbermaid with my white embossing powder. And I keep that so that anything that falls into the emboss or this bucket, it'll, I can just take a spoon. I got my baby little spoon here and I can just spoon it and put it right back in the jar. So I'm gonna tap off any extra. And if you notice that you get any little sprinkles here, just pick them off. It shouldn't really happen, but sometimes it's extra sticky and they just wanna stick where they want. They have a mind of their own. So we've got this ready. So my trick is I always shut this up so that I don't like blow embossing powder all over the place. I'll move that off to the side. I have an older Stampin' Up! heat tool. They are available. They're gray now though. And I'm gonna turn this on. I'm probably not gonna say much while it's on because it's gonna be like a blow dryer. So it's a, a heat tool is a blow dryer meets a toaster. So it's a really hot <laughs> blow dryer. I uh, Look at me. I have my clothespin handy here. And so I'm gonna use that so I don't burn my fingers. And I'm going to turn this on and give me a second. It get, takes a second for it to heat up. And then I'll try to see it so that you can watch it heat it up. Now, I don't know if you girls saw that because I was watching what I was doing. I wasn't watching the camera. But what happens is those little plastic pellets melted and it's glossy now and it's completely baked good. Um, you want to give it a second because it is warm. And if you put your finger to it, some of it might stick to your finger. That has happened to me. So just give it a little blow here, like a little breezy wind here. Hi, <laughs> hi, Bill. So what you want now is you can set that down and you're gonna color this. So just give it a little flap in the wind here and now it's completely um, cooled off. And this is the trick, girls. With your blends, we just colored our ribbon and now with the dark poppy, you can color over the white and that's how you get the red look. Now, for you girls, if you want, if you like the way that the white looks, you definitely can keep it white if you think that pops, but I wanted to teach you another technique and that's coloring your blends over the top of embossing powder. So because you've used the white embossing powder, the marker will take the, like the, the embossing powder will take the color of the marker. So you see what's happening here? It's, you know, you gotta give it a second to cool off because otherwise your marker tip might stick in it. So 
What you can do, girls, if you are at home and you have a Poppy Parade dark blend or even the light blend or a red, you can definitely color this after you're done embossing it. But if you don't have one, I would definitely leave it white. It looks really pretty left white as well. But I wanted to show you a little technique with how you can emboss and then color on your embossed. So yay, look at that. Did you girls know you could do that? And boy, I know that Bill's watching now. <laughs> so, all right, there we go. So that's that. Now what you're gonna do is take your dimensionals and you can definitely put a couple of those on here. And then this is gonna go right over the top of our ribbon. And I have it so that my peaks of my banner meet the black. And I have it centered so that the ribbon is coming out the middle here. And so that's on. Then what you're gonna do is take your poppy element and put a little bit of liquid glue on the back of that. And that's gonna get adhered right over the top of our banner. And then last but not least, you girls all have a beautiful little baby bow that I made for you. And you're gonna grab your glue dots and find your next one. That's gonna go right in the corner here. You gotta be careful with this element. It's gonna take a little second for that to dry. And now we like our bow at a diagonal. <laughs> I think we already took a vote on that. So we're gonna do that one like that. Pull your little tails down. Now again, if you, uh, if you want that tail to get stuck exactly where you want it, put a glue dot right where you want it to go. And then make sure you put your little tail coming out that way. So then it sticks exactly where you want. Hi, Sherry Berry, you like the white, yes. Honestly, the white looks really sharp too. The white stands out more when you um, when you leave it white, it stands out. It honestly does. But I thought, you know what? It looks good with the red too. So I thought that I might as well show you the little trick about how you can color over the top of your Versamark, or your embossed sentiment. So yay, okay. We have to bling it up. Let's add a few of our sequins to it. I know you probably can't see them on the other card, but did you notice here the designer series paper? So when you get a sheet of 12 by 12 designer series paper, there's a certain pattern to it. So depending on how the paper gets cut, everybody's got a little bit different look to their designer series paper. So you can see here, there's a big flower there. Uh, it's a different shape here and there's a stem with white. And then here it's a whole nother section of the sheet. So depending on what you got from your, your pick of the litter here. <laughs> well, actually you didn't get to pick. <laughs> you got a random piece of paper. <laughs> so I'm gonna look for a black sequin because I think that will add a little color there. I know Bonnie hates these clear sequins because she, you know, it's hard to see them on here, but I think I'm gonna throw one on for the heck of it. And we're gonna find another black one, I think. So in this one's, I pulled out a flower. So I randomly got a flower there. So there we go. All right, girls and boys, how are we doing? Did you like that card? It was a little bit um, more simple of a card except for a little bit of coloring and a little bit of coloring here. Char likes the poppy paper, yes. Oh, girls, I don't know, let's see here. Um, where did I put this little paper back? This paper is just gorgeous. There is a paper in here, I think my favorite one if I have to pick you girls know I love purple. So I really like this one. It has a little bit of purpley red to it. But this one right here was super cool. It had long stems of flowers and then these flowers went across the top. It really made for simple, pretty cards. So, um, oh, I loved this one. The back with this purple, so, so pretty. I love that purple. Yay, so fun, fun. All right, so. All right, how did we do girls and boys? <laughs> well, we kept it to about an hour and 40. We're almost done, I gotta take some, I gotta breathe a little bit. That's a lot of hot air that comes out of me when I do a class like this. Did you girls have a favorite card? Did you like one over the other? Let me pull, I'll pull this back so you can see all four of them again. Hang on one second here. Let's grab this one and this one, let's see in the oh Arliss you got your card in the mail today yay what other card did we have here girls we had oh yeah we had the fun fold that's over here so let's pull this let's flip this down here so 
These are the four cards. So Arla's got her, yay! Yeah, when you made it. So you got to see me make that card live. <laughs> Yay. All right. So which is your favorite, girls? Oh, Kelly says all. Kelly, did you get all of your cards made? I'm curious how you did. So we're going to do a little random drawing, girls. So I had here, so this is my class sign-up sheet that I keep track of everybody. And everybody down here for the Poppy class, I had 17 sign up. And everybody's got a number next to them. So... I am going to do a live drawing now. Yeah, I saw Brianna. Um, Kayla is interested in the game night, and I still have a spot for Kayla. Yay, she can uh, register online. Um, okay, girls, so I am going to go to, oh, you can see it here, watch. So I am going to go to my random.org right here, and I am putting in that there's 17 people and I'm going to generate a number. So if you're live watching and you're doing this class, I'm going to announce who the winner is. you got to scream up and down. So generating number four is our winner. And number four, let's see who number four is. Lori Kaiser. Yay, Lori. You are going to be super excited because you won a pack. Of, <laughs> I don't know where I put it anymore, but it was the ribbon. <laughs> Girls. You're gonna laugh at me. I don't even know where I put it. Remember, I couldn't find it when we first started, and now I don't know where I put it just now. But it's a roll of the champagne, and then the blush edge ribbon, like the edge of it is a champagne-y color. So congratulations, Lori. So I think what I'm gonna do for um, for my online classes where I have like the bundle class or the monthly class, all summer long, I'm going to be doing uh, an online version of those two classes, and I'm going to give away a door prize to those people that sign up for the online class that get the kits. So, yay! So exciting for Lori, and I'll tell you, like, I got a hot mess of stuff going on around here, girls. I don't even know. Oh, maybe it's there. Nope, that wasn't it. So, but Lori won the ribbon, so that's excited. So exciting. So what else do we have, girls? I know that we had a whole list of stuff to go over, but we did the door prize, we did the bundle. Okay, so what's next? Uh, tomorrow is Friday, T-G-I-F, right? Oh my goodness, <laughs> what a long week it's been. So tomorrow night, I'll be live early in the evening, I believe. I'm gonna try to, I'll work till five and then I'll try to get on right after it so that we keep it a little bit earlier. And then um, on Monday, I don't know if you saw it, but those who like the Cards by Christine page, I created an event for Monday night. We are gonna do our final swap card showcase. So I have that box of all the cards from the annual catalog, plus I have these three boards right down here that are full of cards, and we're gonna do another swap card showcase. So that's gonna be for next week. And oh my gosh, girls, watch for the mystery event that I'm gonna be doing next weekend. Not this weekend, but Memorial Day weekend. I'm gonna be doing a free event. It's gonna be fun. Uh, you guys are gonna get card, you're gonna get instructions and wait, you're gonna get measurements and like one or two instructions. And so you have to have everything prepped and like cut. And then we're gonna go live together in a Zoom meeting. And I'm gonna give you clues. I'm gonna put my magnifying glass up and give you clues. And we're gonna make a card together. And all of you are gonna have completely different cards. They're gonna have the same layout, um, but they're all gonna be different. So super, super fun. So watch for that. And then next week, Thursday, is the big event. We have our game night and card workshop. And I have space for two to three people more. Maybe, maybe that's it. So if you're still on the fence about it, you better let me know because I have to cap it off. My mom told me today, she's like, Chris, you gotta be done. <laughs> I'm like, but you know, I have a hard time saying no to you girls. So, so if you're on the fence and you wanna do it, you better reach out to me tonight. So, all right, girls, so, and boys. <laughs> I had a couple guys tell me they popped in the other day and I'm, I gotta stop saying girls all the time. So, all right, so I hope that you enjoyed the Peaceful Poppies class tonight with me. I hope it inspired you to make some beautiful cards. I hope that those that participate in the class were able to get their cards done. I'm always available if you have any questions or need help with anything. I know that it's kind of hard to keep up with me. I'm a little speedy of a stamper, and I know you girls had to do a little stamping and a little bit of prep work while I was doing it, and so 
Um, so I know that you might be a little bit behind. And so you can always go back and watch the replay at any time. So, all right, girls, I will be live tomorrow night and I hope that you enjoyed tonight. I hope you ho hope you have a great time until I see you again. And I wish you lots of sunshine and happiness and love. All right. Bye everybody.